Greetings. I'm out in the garage here with my welder again. And the reason I've got the lid off it is because I'm going to show you a very interesting little modification that you can do to one of these welders. And that modification hinges on the fact that it's a 400 and 230 volt welder. And it all hinges on the wiring of that switch. So what I've done is I've taken two photographs of the switch, one at the top, one at the bottom, so I can figure out where all the connections are. Then I've taken all the connections off and then I've tested the switch. And that came up with this switch pattern, which then meant I was able to work out the wiring schematic of the welder, and here it is. You may be wondering, what's the point of that? This is the point of that. The welder is currently running on a 240 volt supply, and here we are with 415 volts inside. Now if you look at the wiring diagram, you can see how that comes about. It's acting as a step-up auto transformer. It's, acting, it's like the overwind on a Variac, except instead of overwinding by 30 volts, this one overwinds by 170. I can have some fun with that. Here it is running a 240 volt floodlight, actually on 240 volts, but the input to the welder is only 135 volts off the Variac, so you can see it steps up and can handle the current quite easily. Although I think the current limiting shunt only seems to work on the welding side, it doesn't work as on the step up side. So, how do you wire this in? Well, if you've got a dual voltage welder that was originally manufactured by Telwin of Italy, then chances are the wiring is exactly the same as this. But it's always well worth taking those connections off the switch and figuring out exactly how it works, because what you may think the connections do and what they actually do can be two completely different things, as I found out when I finally tested it for myself. Anyway, there's enough waffle. Let's get that socket on the front. Although one other thing I am going to do with this is switch the live and neutral connections coming in. If it's on a European supply, it could be polarised either way, so it doesn't matter anyway. This, this should be able to take it. But what I don't want on that red output socket is for one of the phase outputs to be 240 volts to neutral and for the other one to be 415 volts to neutral. It's not what you'd normally get on a three-phase supply. By switching these around and rejigging the wiring, I can put it so that it's 240 volts to neutral on the one side and 175 volts to neutral on the other side with 415 volts between the two phases. I know it's not like a true three phase supply because the phase angles are different but at least the voltages are the same or less than what you'd expect rather than having any nasty surprises in there like having 415 volts phase to neutral. Here we are, all done. You can see there's the earth terminal at the back there and then we've got the red socket at the bottom and just at the top then the connections going onto the switch. There was a spare blade lug on the bottom which wasn't being used so I pinched that and connected it on the top instead which is giving me an extra blade available then for plugging in the black cable. And here it is with the lid back on. Equally happy whether it's running as a 400 volt power supply or a welder. <laughs> <laughs>